Adorama TV presents You Keep Shooting with Brian Peterson. Just how curious are you? The reason I ask is, is that when I come across students in my online photography classes, as well as in my on-location photo workshops, those that are the most curious, generally speaking, have some of the most creative images. Is curiosity important to learning how to see? That's been my experience. I will tell you from the time I was a small child, I've suffered scrapes, bruises, broken bones, hospital visits, all because of what my mother referred to as an overactive imagination and a heavy-duty dose of curiosity to go along with it. So I'd find myself getting into places where I really didn't belong, but I was curious how things looked from those particular places, or how things worked, or if this was sharp or was it not sharp, or what would happen if I poked myself with this hot stick. Well, I find out all these things, of course. So needless to say, that stayed with me all these years, and it's led to, in some cases, some really visually exciting discoveries. In fact, it was just last week, after purchasing some new glasses to drink water, milk, juice from, I found myself raising the glass, and it was at that moment that I thought, holy smokes, the bottom of this glass have these small little bead-like pieces of glass that seem to mimic dew drops. And I thought, how would that be looking if I put this on top of different objects? Well, tonight I have the time. I'm going to utilize an old antique doll and place this glass on top. Nothing fancy here, just an ordinary candle as well to kind of prop this up. So, 105 macro lens. I'm going to focus on the surface here. And if I am lucky, and if my hunch is correct, I should see the doll's face in each one of those dewdrops. Now, before we go any further, let's set the stage with regard to lighting and exposure. I'm in my kitchen. I've got nothing but the ambient light here of tungsten bulbs. My white balance, as a result, is going to be set for tungsten. My ISO is 100. I'm using a Nikon D3X with a Nikkor 105 macro lens. I'm going to simply focus on the top of this here, and at f32, if not 45, I'm going to record inside each one of those drops the doll's face, or a likeness of the doll's face, or parts of the doll's face. Again, I'm not quite certain how this is all going to come out, but it's the curiosity of how this might turn out that got me in this place to begin with. So, I'm on tripod, and I'm getting an exposure time of f32 for 20 seconds. Let's take a look and through the magic of video, I'm not going to have you wait the full 20 seconds, take a look at the photograph. I am very, very pleased. It's fair to say that this idea is not limited to the doll. Obviously, I could set this down on a whole bunch of other objects as well and replicating the same compositional setup before you know it, I've got an entire catalog of objects reflecting inside what looks like dewdrops. So how curious are you? Perhaps tonight you're going to start opening your kitchen cupboards and see what lies in wait. Until next time, this is Brian Peterson saying, you keep shooting. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue.